Aha! Uh -huh. Led by Providence, I left to gather my flock, and we surrounded the tavern. The retribution... The retribution was swift. However, I was tragically mistaken. The young man was no werewolf. He was a bandit, sent to spy on the village by one of the local gangs. We only found out after, when we went through his things. I mean, yeah, kind of. Still no excuse for my actions. I was a fool. I made a grave mistake. And what's worse, in the eyes of my flock, I cast doubt on Arastu's greatness. A priest who can barely hear the voice of his god is a disgrace to his lord and himself, and corrupts the very people he would save. Whatever the case, I knew Arastu was no longer pleased with me. It was terrifying. Ha! Huh. Jihad's voice wavers. Even now, one can glimpse inside him the remnants of the horror he lived through. Imagine how my mind raced when here, in the stolen lands, I heard the voice of the stag god once again. He gave me another chance at service to atone for my guilt. Now I have regained hope, and that very hope is my most precious possession. <laughs> for some, it's a land of freedom. Where power belongs to the people, yeah. not to lords or kings. For others, it's a land of never-ending revolution. A realm surrendered to anarchy. It depends on who you ask. For me, I found Galt a violent place. Crowds eager to lynch a stranger for that accent or appearance where a single word uttered at the wrong time or place can spark the people to riot and cities to burn. Cool. That volatile of a city, I'd be- I would- I would hold the power of death in the palm of my hand. Holy shit. For me, it's a place inhabited by the frightened and the desperate. Always suspicious, watchful of trickery. All too often they are deaf to the voice of reason. They cannot grasp that chaos and lawlessness lead only to yet more chaos and lawlessness. All my life I've tried to break through to these poor people, but alas, I don't seem to have made much progress. Jihad is visibly upset and grows silent for a while. As you wish. Yes. Perhaps I do need the help of a cleric. Well, he sells some good scrolls. Ooh, serious wounds. How may I serve you? Uh. All right, Amiri. So, have you proven yourself to be a mighty warrior? I may have. The trial is finished, and if someone ever doubted me, I prove it. Amiri shakes her fist at the unseen offender. Okay. No stopping now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Follow me. Uh -huh. Here's your ring, Svetlana. Kressel gave it to me. I even managed to convince her not to fight me. Svetlana says... Ooh. Svetlana sighs bitterly. I suppose I should tell you the truth about her. Kressel wasn't her real name. Her real name was Irena. Before all this, she was the daughter of my mother and her second husband. My half-sister. I can't help but feel like everything that happened to her was my fault. She always had a wildness to her. She'd wander the streets hanging out with a bad crowd until the day she passed. 
Mother never, mother complained about Irana constantly. Back then, it was just cruel games and strange escapades. She never really hurt anyone back in Restov. Her father didn't live much longer than our mother, so I decided to try to help Irena. I brought her here to the Stolen Lands, though Oleg was against it. And once here, she immediately fell under the Stag Lord's influence. She never even needed to meet him. The stories and rumors from local hunters and bandits were enough to win her over. She would tell us how he was a real leader, unlike Restov's softies. Eventually, she ran away, only to return under a new name with a pack of thugs to collect taxes from us. What's worse, she participated in the torture and executions of prisoners alongside the Stag Lord's minions. I don't know if there's any way to set her back on the right path, but I'm gr grateful for your kindness. Perhaps there's still hope. For the sake of my mother's memory, I'd like to believe that. Sure. Hmm. Yes. Aha! Hmm. It did sound unconvincing. We're together. What? Ah, uh, Reg seems to treat me like his property? Wow. He's always kind to me and it feels good when we travel together or when we share a blanket at the campsite. But he always calls me my Octavia. I've told him time, told him over and over again that I don't belong to anyone. That I'm my own. That I stay with him by my own free will. He only grins when I say that. I bet he likes to think that, that I'm his. Never mind though, I'll sort it out somehow. Eh. When did you meet Reg? Years ago when I was studying magic at Maestro's Janusha's. Maestro Janusha's. Reg... Reg was his- Reg was his student, too. I don't- I really don't know how to say his name. Though you couldn't actually say he was really studying anything. Reg had his own- has his own ways to cast spells. I fucking can't speak! He never needed the maestro's instructions. You see, unlike wizards, Reg draws power directly from his innate bloodline abilities. So he's a sorcerer, then. Janush didn't realize the nature of Reg's powers when he took the young boy as his newest as his new student, and when he finally understood him, he just taught the negligent half orc to control his powers to avoid harming himself or the others. Reg and I have been together ever since. We could both use magic, but more importantly, we both craved freedom. We used we used to vow to each other that someday we'd break free from the unbearable captivity or die trying together. Octavia gives you a warm smile. I guess it's good that we fulfilled the, only the first part of that vow. You owe him much? Octavia winces. I don't like this O oh word. I don't owe anything to anybody. Everything I do, I do of my own free will. But to answer your question, yes. Reg has done a lot for me. I can't count how many times he was whipped by masters because of me. How many times he took the blame for my doings. He never complained when they dragged him, beaten and covered in blood, to the slave barracks. He just groaned and clenched his fists while I bandaged his wounds with the scraps of my filthy clothing. The fact that Reg is so impulsive doesn't bother you? Ah, that is a very delicate matter. Octavia winces, looking away. Reg means a lot to me, and he endured a lot for me. But some parts of me just- some parts of him just scare me. He becomes extremely bloodthirsty when it comes to slavers. Don't get me wrong, I hate slavers with all my heart, and it'll do a lot to cleanse the world of their filth. But Reg, he'd do anything, understand? Absolutely anything. I'm afraid that anger might kill everything good in him. I've attempted to talk to him about it many times, but he just won't listen. He becomes even angrier after our conversations. Hmm. I just have to ask, how do you manage to look so gorgeous even when we're out here in the middle of nowhere? I don't know if that's appropriate with Regangar standing r r with... Regangar? Regangar! That would be the most... 
<laughs> that would be the most appropriate name, because Ragongar just sounds fucking stupid. I don't know if it's appropriate to say that with him standing there. Could you tell me about your childhood, please? Too little. Scra some scraps of memories, no more than that. What exactly do you remember? Nothing special. Some images of a faraway past, that's all. Huh. I do remember wooden table legs. The paint on them was peeling off, and I was standing on my toes, trying to peek at what was on the table. I remember the wild rose by the window. It kept me up at night, scratching the glass with its gnarled branchlets. I do remember my mother's blue dress. It was a trifle battered, but it smelled of lavender! Octavia wrinkles her forehead. I guess that's all. Not much there, right? Ah, oh, those memories... It's like they're not mine at all. I recall some images, and I know I should feel something about them, but I don't remember what exactly I should feel. So let them rot in a swamp with tatsel worms. Octavia grins cheerfully. My life's good enough without them. What do you know about your parents? You're a half-elf, right? Am I? Octavia examines herself as if seeing herself for the first time. What? You know, I think you might be right. I'm rather slim and tall, and I can see well in dim light. She raises her hands and touches her ears. Aha! They're a bit pointy. Yes, I'm definitely a half-elf. Have you never thought about this before? What the fuck? Hmm, let's think about that logically. So my mother was an elf, and my father was a human. Or maybe it was the other way around. And my mother was a... Finally, Octavia can't... Having spoiled her own act. What? So that's it. Now you know as much about my parents as I do. She says after her laughter subsides. Okay, do you remember how you were enslaved? I clearly remember the man who took me away from my home. He was big and a hu- and with, with, with- Words! With a huge pot belly and a shaggy beard. I was afraid he would eat me? Well, this isn't divinity. Anyway, he didn't stay with me long. He gave me to a slaver. And I never saw him again. When my mother was giving me to him, she was crying. I can still barely hear her quiet voice, but I can't recall her words or her face behind the tears. Just that lavender smell. It tickled my nose and I wanted to sneeze. Did my mother sell me into slavery? But then why was she crying? And if she didn't want me to be a slave, why didn't she try to save me? Octavia twirls her hair, pondering over the thought, then sighs. One more riddle from my past that I don't care to solve. It must be horrible being unable to recall your childhood. Oh, I recall my childhood in rather bright details. It was spent in dirty barracks. I wore flea-infested rags and slept on a straw mat mattress instead of a proper bed. Octavia smiles humorlessly. Though I understand what you mean. You know, to be honest, I'm not sure I want to remember my childhood before slavery. If I could remember what I lost, it would probably just bring me more pain. Octavia shakes her head several times and makes herself smile again. So it's good that I don't remember much of anything. I can't argue with that. Uh, you worship Calistria, right? Yes! Many slaves survived only thanks to their faith. Some lived hoping for a day when a good deity would deliver them. Some even offered deals to the evil gods, but me and Reg, Calistria has taught us the most important things. Expect no gifts from above, rely only on ourselves. Never forgive those who wronged us, but at the same time, savor every droplet of pleasure we could, s pleasure we could squeeze from our bleak days. Uh-huh. It's amazing how after all your hardships, you still remain so cheerful and optimistic. Yes. Octavia's smile fades a little. I try not to view my life as a never-ending course of sufferings. Yes, I've had, my fair, I've had my share of hard times, but do I need to recall them? After all, along with the bad things, I had some good things as well. I had a dream, and I followed it, and eventually it came true. Following that path, I met Reg and you. Now I'm free and surrounded by friends.